Chapter 30 Flashes of Color and Light Explosions, Devastation, and Destruction Two monsters, one bathed in golden fire, the other a beast of golden light, both uncontrollable, both with unfathomable power. A planet turned to dust with their rage. A fight that could have lasted forever, ended in a single moment with an explosion that would be felt in the far reaches of space. Planet of the Kais three days later. You have awoken. My eyes snap open as I roll to the side, my senses screaming at me that I'm about to die. I fall off of a stone table of sorts, smacking into the ground rather hard, continuing to roll in that direction. As I hop to my feet, surveying the area, a smallish man runs in. KLL, wait. He cries out, holding his hands towards me. You're safe. My whole body jerks, flinches, as a massive pain courses through my head. I grab my head in one hand, trying to steady myself. Where am I? Who are you? I yell as I flood my body with energy, trying to push myself to my maximum. KLL, I am the Supreme Kai, and you're on my planet. Please calm down and let me explain fully. He says. I open my eyes, peeking through my fingers, glaring through the pain. As I'm staring, I realize that he is indeed the Supreme Kai. With a slight push, I release the energy I was building, barely managing to stay on my feet. As I lean against the table, I finally manage to open my eyes fully. What's wrong with me? I ask. Your body wasn't ready for the amount of energy it channeled. I don't understand what you did, but it's messed with your body badly. We're close to fixing it, but we need more time. Will you give that to us? He asks. I should have been healed by sleeping. What the fuck is going on? I think as I roll back onto the table. Fine, I reply. Thank you, KLL. Now sleep. He says as he waves his hand over my head. Sacred world of the Kai two days later. You have awoken. HP fully restored. My eyes slowly open as I finally wake up. My body feels back to normal, and everything seems to have healed completely. Out of the corner of my eye, I see that I have an alert telling me I've leveled up. Wait, so I beat Broly? I think quickly accessing it. With a few quick inputs, I've leveled up, adding the stat points as needed. I also grabbed the Feet Super Kaoken X10, saving the rest for later. Pulling up my character sheet, I see that not only did I level up, but that I gained a point in battle as well. Those two additions raised my power level to 51.3b as a Super Scion 2. On top of that, while my normal Super Scion form could access all the way to Super Kaoken X10, my Super Scion 2 form could only go to Super Kaoken X7. It may seem shitty, but at 359b, for however long I could hold it, I'd be almost unstoppable. I may even be strong enough to stop Bu. I roll off the table again, managing to catch myself before I hit the floor. I quickly realize that the gravity here is slightly stronger than even using the gravity chamber on planet Vegeta. If I can find the time, I need to train a bit and gain as much STR and END as I can. My armor is completely gone, as are the clothes I wore beneath. A quick search of the strange chamber, and I've pulled on a robe of sorts. It's a little breezy, but one does what they can. As I exit, I find Kibito standing guard outside of the chamber. Oh. Hello. I say lamely. Scion, Kibito replies, nodding at me. Welcome back to the world of the living. Um. If I can ask, what the hell happened? I ask. Oomph. As you did your little move, nearly killing yourself in the process, the Supreme Kai and I escaped. We tracked your battle from afar, and once it had ended, we returned, bringing both you and the one you fought here. Which you should be thankful for, as otherwise you would have most likely damaged yourself beyond repair. He says as he gives me a disdainful look. Wait, Broly is here as well? Is he okay? I ask. As well as he can be. That man is broken in many ways. Kibito says, motioning at the door across from me. As I make to move to the door, Kibito blocks me. He is in a healing sleep at the moment. He shouldn't be disturbed. He says. I nod before asking, is the Supreme Kai still around? I need to thank him as well, it seems. He is, if you take the stairs at the far end all the way up, you should be able to find him easily. He answers. Awesome. Thank you again. I say, turning to leave. Scion. He calls out. 
I do not trust you. I know your race well, and I do not like having won your kind on our sacred planet. Step out of line, and I will put you down like a rabid animal. I stop at the bottom step and call back over my shoulder. You'd try before making my way up. Spreading my senses out, I find the Supreme Kai and start making my way there. A short walk later, and I find myself standing outside, staring up at the beautiful sky. Lifting off, I quickly circle the compound, landing near my goal. Supreme Kai, hello. Thank you for your help. I feel a million times better than I did before. I say as I walk over, and thank you for helping Broly as well. Can you tell me any more about that? Yes, KLL, hello. Broly, you said? He is deeply injured, and I do not mean physically. We shall continue to work on him, but even I am unsure if we will manage in the end. I must admit that while healing you is its own reward, I did it mainly because we need your help. North Kai mentioned that you already know of Mage and Bu. He explains. I do, yes, I reply. He begins to walk, motioning me along. As we walk, he explains further. He is a grave threat, not only to the mortal planes but to all. Unless he can be stopped, his insatiable hunger will devour all that exists. I cannot allow that to happen. To that end, I need a warrior. He explains as we reach the end of the path. At this time, there is no one else in the universe that may be able to stop Bu. I believe that with the right tool and the right training, you may be able to kill Mage and Bu. The only question left is do you accept? I do. What do you need me to do? I ask. First, I need you to try and remove this sword. New Namek one week prior. Landing at the base of a small hill, the Scion makes his way over to a small hut. As he approaches, a very old-looking Namekian exits. His eyes narrow as he stares at the approaching figure. Why have you come here, Scion? Muri asks. Hello, Namekian. My name is Raditz, and I come on the orders of my king. Sacred world of the Kai. Fuck me. I might be able to get access to Gohan's mystic form. I think, as I immediately move over to the sword. At the current moment, base form, I'm sitting at a bit over 1 billion power level. Wrapping my hands around the guard on the Z sword, I push immediately to Super Scion 2, flooding my muscles with energy. With a mighty heave, the massive sword begins to slide out, inch by inch, as I burn energy like nothing else. With a final yank, the Z sword comes out, its massive weight nearly pulling me to the ground. I lower my power level slightly, till I find that the sword is hard to swing, but not impossible. My word, the Supreme Kai whispers, seeing what he thinks is my true power. That sword has remained within that stone for over 75 million years. Well, you said to pull it out. I remark as I take a few practice swings. This thing is ridiculously heavy. The Supreme Kai continues to stare at me, as I take a few more practice swings. After a few minutes of swinging it around, I receive a new alert. Bing, you have gained a point in strength for training in higher gravity while using weighted training equipment. I stare at the alert for a moment, frowning. Wait, holy fuck I forgot about weighted training clothes. I could have been getting my training on even in lower gravity. Foo dash, sacred world of the Kai. After a small breakdown and screaming for a bit, I finally calm down and start training with the sword. I don't need to train very long with it, as it's massive weight, and my ability to control my power level down to the hundredth. I could keep a constant drain on my power level, so my gains never actually slow down. I'm getting some weighted training clothes and fixing this bullshit. How the fuck did I forget? I think as I perform a spinning slash. I'd already dropped down to just Super Scion and barely half of my current max power level. As I currently am, I could go full out with Super Scion 2 for several hours straight and Super Scion nearly limitlessly. I was quickly getting to the point where I could have the Supreme Kai summon that black stone so I could break the sword. Shin was still watching me, so I thought now would be a fantastic time to show off. With a push, I moved back into Super Scion 2 while shouting Super K.O. Ken. Time 7. My power level explodes as my aura flashes to burnt orange. The bioelectricity around me sparks and flashes. My speed and strength having moved so high, I start slashing with the sword at breakneck speed. Shin is able to follow it, but knows he couldn't move that fast even if he wanted to. After a few minutes, I stop before dropping back to base form. I heft the sword, setting it onto my shoulder. I think I've got it, Supreme Kai, I tell him. Staring at me with wide eyes, he replies, yes, I do believe you do. I think I should test the strength of the sword though. 
Got anything really tough to cut I can use? I ask. Um, yes. I can summon some catchin, which is the densest material in the universe. He replies. I think that sounds perfect, Supreme Kai. I reply with a smile. Two hours later, I find myself sitting cross-legged in front of a very, very old Supreme Kai. After breaking the Z-Sword, much like in the original show, the Elder Supreme Kai was released. It took quite some time to convince him that I needed my potential unlocked in order to defeat Mage and Bu, but in the end, we were successful. Of course, just like in the show, he is taking his damn time with it. I can't help but feel he's already done, but I can't exactly say anything. I think as I continue to sit there, hopefully, this doesn't take much longer. I've been away from Planet Vegeta for a week. Bara is sure to think I died against Broly. New Namek one week prior. And what orders are those, Scion? Elder Muri asks. There is a sudden spark of energy, as Raditz raises his hand, blasting a tiny hole through Muri's chest. As he collapses, dying, he hears Raditz speak a final time. To bring you in, alive. Planet Vegeta. It has been one week since the Scion KLL had vanished from the planet, taking Broly along with him. While many mourned his loss, believing him dead, a small group celebrated that the threat he represented was at last gone. King Vegeta, sitting deep within the chambers beneath the palace, listens to the final minutes of the tracker attached to KLL on repeat. It plays over and over as he tries to understand exactly what happened in those final moments. Who does he yell at? What is happening that he believes they need to run? He thinks as he hits repeat again. The recording stops almost immediately after. Perhaps a suicide move? Whatever it was, it must have killed him and Broly. Neither are showing on the trackers again, and we received reports of a Class 6 explosion from that system. The reports show that it's nothing but an asteroid field now, something that I know he was capable of years ago. His scouter beeps, interrupting his thoughts. Vegeta stands, before reaching over and turning the system off. Swiftly exiting, he makes his way through the winding hallways, before he reaches two automatic sliding doors. As the doors open for him, he immediately is overcome by the septic clean smell of the room. Doctor, what do you have for me? He asks as he approaches a short scion. My king, the data we received from studying the anomaly has finalized. While I still do not think we could fix his rage issues, I do believe we can recreate a portion of his abilities in vitro, without the other effects. The scientist replies, So you think that you may be able to, what? Recreate his powers, but without the madness? Vegeta asks, Yes, sir. For the anomaly, he was much too old. Changing him at the genetic level would have killed him at best. But for a newly formed fetus, it should be doable. We'll need to run trials. He explains. You'll have the funding you need, Vegeta says as he turns to leave. My lord, the scientist asks. Without turning around, Vegeta replies, yes. Was, was it necessary to use the anomaly against the Scion KLL? They were both fantastic subjects to study. He hesitatingly asks. Vegeta turns, his eyes meeting the scientist's own. They were both grave threats to our people. While it was dangerous to incite a rage defense in Broly, I knew that both KLL and Bara were close by. We ran the simulations, and it was obvious how he would react. That it killed them both, not merely distracting KLL, or injuring him for a longer period of time, was just a happy side effect. Now get back to work. As the doors slide shut behind him, he hesitates, before continuing on his trek. He was quite happy with the recent turn of events, and could only hope that things continued in the same vein. Thankfully, his next destination would be a big step forward in that regard. The chambers beneath the palace were built for several different reasons, one of which was the last refuge from invasion. Lined with a special metal alloy that could only be mined from asteroids around black holes, the metal alloy absorbs all energy emissions, making it impossible to sense anyone held within, scouter, or no. Which of course made it the perfect place if you needed a person to disappear. Taking a right at the far hallway and heading down a hidden set of stairs, he quickly finds himself within the dungeon section. As he approaches a set of doors, they open, breaking the soundproof seal. The loud screaming, while not quite bringing a smile to his face, does at least put hope in his heart that one day soon, they will have the information they need. Vegeta knocks on one of the doors, before stepping back to the side. Inside, the screaming stops, before being replaced by loud sobs. The door slides open, a scion exiting. Has he answered yet? King Vegeta asks. Not yet, my lord. He will soon, though. A person can only take so much pain. Raditz replies. Planet Vegeta. Within the Super Strike Force Gravity Chamber, Bara once again finds himself training all out. I failed again, KLL. Again, you needed me to be stronger, and again, I simply didn't measure up. He thinks as he pushes himself to the limit. When you get back, wherever you are, I'll be strong enough to help you. That's a promise. Believe it. Pausing in midair, Bara gets a strange look on his face. What? Face. A dark ship, nearly black against the field of stars, floats silently along. In the distance, 
a slight blue twinkle of light reflects back. Deep within the ship, Majin Buu rests within a meditative state, awaiting arrival at his next goal. A screen on the wall happily proclaims that 24 hours remain. The sacred world of the Kai. Um, Elder? We've been at this for close to four hours. Will you be done soon? I ask finally. Hmm, no. The ritual takes 24 hours as it is. However, your energy is odd, and not something I've worked with before. It will take me much longer to unlock your potential. So just sit there silently and be patient. He replies. Also, KLL, there is something I need to talk to you about before you leave. It's of the utmost import. Shin tells me. I nod before closing my eyes again, sensing the fantastic energy that the elder is moving around me. I can only hope that this will work.